this world isn't the world you think it is. Because when the Lord delivers you, you wake up the next day as if a dream. But you, you see, the past is being changed and you don't even know it. These people that rule this earth and these people that have given consent to the dragon, which is how the Bible describes it. These people that belong to that are already as if they never were. Why do you think they must cause maximum trauma and try to steal everything you have, put you in little cages and then torture you to death? Why do you think they do that to you? Because they could not exist if they didn't. That's how they feed to live. That makes the Manfred Mann song very sinister. Who's your daddy? Is he rich like me? Does he take the time to show you what you need to live? Well, they're not talking about Jesus there, okay? They're talking about the other side. And they're not just talking sex there. They're talking something else, but they just figured, writing those lyrics, that nobody would ever catch them. The people that knew what it was about, they were already down. You know what you're down? It's not sympathy for the devil. That's not it at all. This is an interdimensional prison right now. And the Lord doesn't want us just saying no to the simulator. But it is a simulacrum. It is absolutely. Every one of us is followed and tracked every single day of our lives. The hounds of hell have been released against us. We've been scattered from the day we were born. We've been harmed from the day we were born. We've been tortured from the day we were born. That's not how it's supposed to be with God. He will not allow that to go on any further. He said in his word today, today it stops. Tell them, and I'm telling you. You've seen yourselves gathering. Well, just an example of, you know, I'm using this music thing only because I've, you know, it's been what I've been involved in lately, but, you know, meeting people that are doing music, the, the guy happens to write a song about the very thing, you know, like, I, I, you know, that's what I mean. That, that that separation is is there are no coincidences. That was you couldn't come by something like that ten years ago. They you know like the song got to keep them separated. What do you think that is? They feel they have to keep you all separated, but it's not happening anymore, is it? Hallelujah! There's a lot of you, a lot of you, and I guarantee you. You will be rewarded for your resistance to this maximum evil that will be as if it never has been. And I guarantee that because the Lord has guaranteed us that. It will be as if it has never been. You'll wake up one day and it'll be gone. Just like you wake up and there it is. You go to sleep, you wake up again. It's, no, it's not. You wake up again. Oh, but there it is. And that's how it's been. They're your friends. You don't see them. You go back. They're your friends, but they're not who you knew before. Who are they? And then, of course, if, if you think about it, then you become paranoid. With good reason. Because they start coming after you. Like a nightmare. Because, indeed, this life is more like a dream, like a nightmare, than anything else. But it's a controlled nightmare. And in nightmares, the people that you knew before are not the people that you know now. Though You see them, and they're one thing, but then you see them in your dream, and they're totally another. Exactly right. That dream is trying to tell you something. That dream is trying to explain to you what reality is, where you are. You see, inside you want to heal. You know everything within, but you don't know you do. It's kind of blocked off from you. But you have all the knowledge you need to wake up from this nightmare. And you're, even you are trying to wake yourself up from it because that's what healing looks like. Because you could die if you stay asleep. And you start to see that reality is not contiguous. History is not contiguous. People are not contiguous. You know, you, um, 
It's just the way it is. I don't know why it is. You, we walk together with people we, we know. I know that. If they're brethren, they're contiguous. I mean, obviously, they stay the same, you know, but everything else, everyone else changes, though. And they're not, you know, and again, they start making hand signals or they may start whistling and they start making noises inappropriately. Now, my second example, a third example here is when I, you know, I saw the soul scalping, obviously, as a kid when I was like, you know, 15, 16. And, um, you know, that was a very orderly process. You know, people that didn't get it, they were just forced and coerced by their parents to become demons. In order to what? Uh, hold sway in the world? Well, the world, the zero sum game is up, folks. There is no more, there are no more trinkets to give kids anymore for this. They don't have anything to dole out. Don't you get it? So they gotta kill everybody. Don't you get it? It's out. Gotta have a war now. Don't have the money. Don't want your soul. Screw rock and roll. Don't need it. Are you beginning to understand? <laughs> Seriously, this is, this is, uh, a live wire today. Just, are you understanding what's being told to you? Well, you should rejoice because, you know, the Lord is gonna, well, he's gonna with the, he's just gonna flip it around. He's not gonna let his people get pummeled anymore. The Babylon is about to be attacked and and destroyed. You may lose your life in that, or this life, this, but you won't lose your life. It'll be like this was a dream. We getting it now? The dream analogy works best uh, because dreams are multidimensional. So that's that you know people. They, in one dream, they're not the same as the people that are the same, but they're not the same as in the next segment of the dream. That happens a lot in dreams. So a dream is a good working analogy. Okay, so we'll use that. Uh, flight simulator is okay, but uh, only to the extent that the, the Lord is like, congratulations, you figured out, you know, what kind of thing you're in or what the deal is. Uh, but this is, you know, my will because I am fashioning you into the person I want you to be. Yes, um, you know, it's a uh, it's painful process, but, you know, uh, those who stay the course, obviously, are those who don't consent, are those who stay the course. He will bless everyone that, that resists. I don't care what culture or background you're from, you know, whether it's a Buddhist, Hindu, this, that, it doesn't matter. You know, the lambs are the lambs. It doesn't matter wherever you come from. The innocent are the innocent, wherever you come from. The pure hearts are the pure hearts, wherever you come from. And you will be blessed. I guarantee it. This idea of saying, Hail Mary's or Hail Jesus, and you're in the club, you can throw that out! How many people with these fake baptisms and fake testimonies and fake this and fake that? Standing up at the congregation of the church, saying all this stuff with their mind control victims, MK Ultra, right off the bat. Giving a really believable, credible testimony, and yet the mask comes off in the back room. What the hell are you talking about? You have no right to talk to me at all. Ever. Do not send me their testimonies on video. I'm not interested. I know who's real and who's not. I may not be the best judge of character and get burned from time to time, but ultimately I know. Sometimes I get around the wrong people and act like, I'm okay, I'm going to try here and... You know, but it's the Lord's doing a work, and I can't see he wants me to fly the plane. I can't just say, no, it's a joke, Lord. I have to fly the plane. I have to fly the plane. Why did I come here then? Yes, we're in it, not of it. And we've been pummeled. Brother Thomas... You know, one of the very, maybe, handful of accurate people with prophecy gift 
He may be one of just a handful in the entire world of billions of people. A handful. And of course, it's understood that he is obscure and not seen and not known. I was told by more than one person that you have to lie or they won't love you. You have to play pretend or they won't love you. So all the prophets online today are all pretend. Oh, they think they're really in it. They think they're acting the part up. And it's just, it's not even, um, I mean, after the September, after what they did to us in September with all the, you, you, you can't just go on and say, oh, yeah, buddy, uh, you know, hey, brother. You can't do that. You're going to hurt yourself if you do that. You're going to hurt yourself bad. You're going to have to wake up now. All those cats have been used to, 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 to brainwash you into thinking this is a contiguous kind of drudgery reality. You've even been tempted to go to the other side for, because you're maybe young and, and, you know, sexually attractive and, and they want you and, you know, you've, you've been tempted that way because you, you, you bought the lie. Time for you to get on back to the Lord. If you're going to sin, you do it before the Lord. Bring him in on it. That's the only way you're going to get a healing. Father, I'm about to, 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 I'm sorry. I don't want to do it, but help me, Lord. You know, bring him in. Not run away and then go sin and then come back when you're perfect. The Lord will have none of it. You will not hear from the Lord if that's going to be your, your attitude and that's going to be your behavior. He will not help you. You will have no connection to the Lord God Almighty, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ. No connection whatsoever if you decide to go sin off there, out there, and then come back when you're more pure. And then when you start getting the urge again, you go over there again. Oh, the Lord, you bring him in. Lord, uh, this is... And when the demons start whispering in your ear, you bring him in on it. And it's still tough. Doesn't mean you're going to succeed. You might sin. Oh, well, welcome to the club. That's, you know, what do you think this is all about? The sinning, then, you know, the greatest one, of course, is to deny the Lord God himself, which is the most foolish thing a man can do on this earth. Seriously, or a child, or a woman, or anyone you know, being, is to deny the Lord God. And with, because then you get this hysteria over the Pope. This is what happens when people do that. They deny the Lord, right? They, they, they commit idolatry, and they worship a thing rather than the Lord himself. And this is what you wind up with. These stupid people, these, these forsaken people, are not going to get diddly squat. They're going to be... Um, they're going to be sorry for the day they were born if they continue down that path with the uh, with El Pope. Because this guy is from the pit of hell. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, for those of us who can see, I can see. I have you know that kind of discernment. I I know. I don't I don't feel particularly. You know, like people say, he's the evilest one in the world and, you know, the whole Antichrist thing. They're always trying to label the anti. I, you know, I'm just going to let it ride. I, I don't need to call him any label. It's just that, you know, we've had a very, very evil time here. But in this evil time, I wanted to show you today how the light is coming forth. How the force from the north is going to crush Babylon. I wanted to prophesy... Now, I'm no P prophet, and I could be very fallible, so you check it with the spirits, right? See if they're of God. Do not follow me, whatever you do. I'm here to kind of blow your mind, and then, you know, then you, then you go with your mind. You don't come back here like that, like wanting the next, right? You just, it's your process that's important, not mine. You know, this is just, just a special sharing of something that's going on now. Okay, so the gang stalking represents this being scattered to the four winds, you know, this being scattered to the people. Most of the people being gang stalked, they, they, unfortunately, they've been brainwashed into thinking 
that it's all some terrestrial linear kind of thing. And it's got to do with, oh, they're on the wrong political party or they were on the wrong, you know, the, I mean, no, there's the bigger issue. It's a spiritual battle. And everything is subject to that on this earth. And they're lying to you if they say any differently. Now, I've had people that were believers. They believe in the Lord God Almighty. They believe, they, but they still think it's some terrestrial thing like, you know, they, they point to implants and they point to um, electronic, you know, one example that happened to me was I was hearing the Navy fight song on a kind of a, a voice to skull sort of transmission type of thing. I could hear it like almost as well as hearing uh, a radio that was kind of in the next room. You know what I mean? It was like, but it was louder than that. It was right present in my head. And uh, Dr. John Holloway talked to me. He, he said that all these other people, because he has communities of, I guess, people that feel that they're under this electronic uh, and, and this whole harassment thing. And he said that, well, they all had the same Navy fight song at the same time, Zeph. You're not going to get out of it. And he was trying to get me to buy in to, uh, to being a victim. I mean, not, he's, a, he's a lovely guy. Don't, don't get me wrong. I really like him. And he's not doing anything on purpose. This is, okay, so it's not, I'm not putting him down. The man is dedicated to doing a good job, and he, and he does love the Lord and all that. It's just that, you see, I'm on my path, and he can say what he wants, but, you know, I wouldn't join them. And it wasn't because I said, no, you're no good. It was that I just wasn't led there because, um, and I was proven right. Because with the Lord, you see, all that stuff stopped. <laughs> but it, I did have the Navy fight, so I write that, and I was a firm, I was doing the Zeph Report. It was 2004. I, I've been doing the Zeph Report already two years. I've been on these different shows, and not, not that I was welcome there, but I mean, they tried to thrash me on those shows because they just wanted to mock me like I was somehow, I was wrong, in the wrong and they were in the right. You know, we'll have this approved of profit here, we'll have Steve Quayle on here, but you, Zeph, no, you're... You need to be mocked. Well, what's the difference between me and Steve Quayle then, Mr. Nori? Or the others, the Lynn Marzulis and the rest of them. What's the difference? And I know all these people. I mean, I've known, you know, uh, not all of them personally, but I mean, I know where they come from. They're not like me. I'm not like them. Just, there's a hint out there for you. <laughs> I don't want to get into war with them, you know. But uh, what what was the difference between the approved of and the non approved of? Why is that? It was the same thing that went on in high school. Same thing that goes on when, when we went to the Barnes and Noble to meet uh, to meet this guy that I had known out in L.A. It's someone you would probably know, but an author that you know would. Went to a bookstore to have a cup of coffee. And I got in there and things were different. You know, people were... And he came late. He came in and he started whistling. <laughs> whistling. He came in whistling abnormally. <laughs> you know, kind of not even in a tune, really. Just irritating. I go, oh, uh, yeah, hey. What's happening? How about a coffee? You know, I'm buying... Uh, how about a cappuccino? No, no, I'm just, you know, I'm just, he's tapping his foot. He's really nervous. He's looking around to see if anyone sees him sitting with me. He doesn't want to be seen with me. I can tell that right off the bat. Oh, my God, this is turning into something. Then all of a sudden, there's people that, I'm sleep right here in the background, you know. And it's like that kind of thing's going on. I'm like, okay, I'm in a different movie set. This is an attack. It's real. Okay, we're on. Now, most of you would recognize what I just said, right? You would call it gaslighting. Uh, they planned it. No, no, no. This comes from another dimension. The entire Barnes & Noble and all the people in it and this guy are not the same person that I saw before. They're wearing the same costumes, everything else is not the same. But you see, I'm not supposed to believe that's possible, so I think it's the same, so I freak out! So I had my coffee. I somehow got out of there. Okay, we'll see you. And then at one point he goes, What's the good word, Zeph? Like like that, a comment like that, but really loud. So the whole place, you know, just inappropriately loud. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Zef, you're awesome. And then at that point, it's like, oh, my God, this, he's stabbing me with that one. 
loud. Some people, other people hear, in the background, right? People here and there, staring over there. All right. It's, it, you know, it's spiritual warfare 101. Number one, that is not the same Barnes and Noble that I was at before out in the San Fernando Valley, up to Panga or whatever. Nope, wasn't. Two, that wasn't the same man that I knew before. He was different. Oh, he may be remembering of a situation like that. I doubt it, though. He was not the person that I had met before. I remember I met him at Jerry's Deli because someone else needed me to go meet him. You have to see this. What if I don't want to? So obviously he's a handler controller guy. Um, and so obviously I've been doing a good job because he came in like that and all manifested. I mean, this was basically, a de this was not the same person, not the same personality, not the same anything, but in the same body. That's the only similarity. All right, leave the Barnes and Noble. I'm freaked out. You know, back then I couldn't handle it. And so I, you know, went home and I tried to calm down and whatever. The next day seemed different. Indeed. This is not Groundhog Day, folks. And I go back to the Barnes and Noble. I've, I feel like, I think I had to return a book. I didn't want something. There was some reason I had to go back there. I went back there. It, it may not have been the next day, but it was in, within that sphere. And I noticed that the people there, the clerk, the, they were there before, but they're not the same as they were before. And they were treating me really nice. And everything seemed just fine. After they were manifesting, giving me the evil eye, they were like just practically wanting to just kill me. And, then, and, and indeed, things like that have happened where they kill people. And, um, you know, and then the next thing you know, it's like it never happened. And it's even like that person never existed that got killed. And there's no memory of that person in anyone's mind ever having been. That's the kind of messed up stuff I'm talking about. And that's the kind of stuff that's real. That's the kind of stuff they don't want you to know. That's why I have to be very careful. That yeah, God pulls people out like Enoch all the time. But then the whole reality shifts to where that person never was on the earth before, so there's no memory of that person, even if that could have been your best friend. And yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, the Lord God deserves all the glory because he can help you, because he loves you, because he made this, because he is, you know, period. And nothing else just is. It's the only place we have to go. Do it on your own at your own peril. Go become a professional victim. There's plenty of them. That's what happened to Randy Quaid. He left Hollywood. He, he, yeah, he got on and all that. He doesn't understand what it is. He does, they don't. The Quaids, you know, they're, 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 they're victims. I feel sorry for them. I, I know exactly what happened to Randy. I'm, you know, it's happened to me, the same thing. I, I know exactly how Hollywood works. It's terrible um, how bad it is, this kind of stuff we're talking about. There's victims every day of it. When they're famous, you know, and they're, they're soft-killed, meaning they can't work again, they're, they're blackballed. If they say there's something like satanic pedophiles in Hollywood, boom! The machine turns against them. And when you're dealing with Hollywood, you're also dealing with the government and law enforcement and the NSA. I mean, that's all connected, you know. I've, people don't seem to understand that, and they don't want you to understand that. But the whole thing is the government, and the, and the government belongs to this other dimension, which is basically the enforcer of another dimension, and they're gearing up now to traumatize as many people as possible with the, this false immigrant thing, this fake pope, this fake president, this fake, 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 fake. It's all just stimuli being poured in from another dimension, these weird computers. I don't even know, I can't even describe what they are, but they program us. And they keep programming you to be Groundhog Day. It's still the same contiguous world. I wake up the next day and everything is different, but it's the same thing. No! It's different! You're right! They don't want you to understand that. They'll call you crazy. So now it gets dialed into the individual. That's the threat to the whole thing, isn't it? 
the individual that stays the course of the Lord. Now, those of you who gave in and then realized that it wasn't just about sex, I hope you realized that when you were 12. It's about something else. And after you've seen all the deaths, I think now, if you still have a conscience, you must repent if you hear this word. You must, or the Lord will not speak to you again. This is your last chance. Get on your face. You just give your life over to Jesus Christ, the one, the true God. The Lord, the creator. You say this to the one who made me. I give you my life. I don't want to give consent to the dragon. I don't want to be uh, on that on their team anymore. Please, Lord, deliver me. Uh, I'll, I'll give my life to you, Jesus. Please deliver me. Help me, Lord. I just call on you. I give you all my being, all my honor, all my love, all, everything I have I give you, all my love, all my, my trust. I trust you, Lord. Please deliver me. I'm, I'm fervent now. I don't know if you're there or not. I'm just going to call on you. And that's what I did, folks. I didn't know he would respond like he did. I'm not going to tell you what to pray. I'm not going to give you the official sinner's prayer. I just want you to go to the Lord in any way, shape, or form that you know how. Because within you, anything I could tell you is already within you. So you know everything I'm going to say. It's already within you. But if you don't go now, the door is going to shut and you won't have another chance. Now you wish that you listen to me. That this day would be different. And he will deliver you out of that situation. Because nobody ever gets out, really. That ongoing nightmare, you think you get out of it in death? <laughs> yeah. You know, some say that's what, really what hell is. This endless cycle of pain and suffering. The Buddhists think that. But they think it's a one-to-one -one reincarnation thing. That's, they're always looking for the next Dalai Lama and they make a mistake. See, you can make a mistake. They, they, they bought the lie, right? The Tibetans in general, and they're full, if you read their books. If you read the Tibetan Book of the Dead, you realize they bought the lie. Um, that there's a contiguous thing going on here. No, it isn't. The Dalai Lama doesn't know that, and the rest of them don't know that. It's, uh, they're supposed to be really sharp. There's a bunch of them here, by the way. They moved here as children. We have a lot of Tibetans here. A lot, a lot, a lot in Santa Fe. And everyone kind of keeps going to them because it's if you're the lineage of the, they're caught up with the genetics of it. And that's the stupidest thing you could do. That's like the whole Jew thing. You know, it's just, you know, you're not Jewish if you're not the genetic uh, convert from Russia from a certain era, you know, four or five hundred years ago. I mean, it's all BS, all that. You know, the, the Bible makes it very clear who the children of God, the Most High God are, you know. Um, but without being a child of the Most High God, you, <clears throat> you know, I mean, I think this is an oxymoron, but I mean, obviously, without being a child of God, you know, there's, you're just really a piece of furniture. I'm sorry. You know, um, you know, go worship the Pope. That's, that's what you're good for. You know, that's your, you know, go, you know, I know you want to go slaughter a few lambs, you know, go ahead. That's, that's your job. That's what you're there for. To slaughter the children of the Almighty God. That's, 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 that's how you roll. I have no personal animus against you. It's just like, I don't like a, um, you know, a tsunami, right? Because if I go stand there, I'm going to get crushed. And so I'm not going to go stand next to you because, you know, the, you're, you're, there's plenty of those kind of people, by the way. They've already infiltrated all your Christian organizations. They're in all your chat rooms. And they're just waiting to see who they can devour. No. They're going to give you false prophecies like this is some kind of contiguous thing. No, it's not. It's different for every single one of us. Yet we share our constant reality. We share a dream. But the dream isn't real. We have to wake up. When we wake up, all of this will be as if it never was. That's the best way I could describe it to you. And I, and I think there's other people that are involved in physics and other things. They're coming to similar conclusions from different disciplines, different, different aspects. See what I mean? And they may be from different religions, but they're all kind of coming. They're all, I, I know a lot of the New Agers who are good people, the good ones. You know, they're 
having this, talking about this awakening and where they fall into troubles, they get caught up in astrology and you know what I mean, and the occult, and then that kind of wrecks it. Right. They don't get the whole truth because of that, uh, that occult um, spirit. That occult spirit will never lead to the truth. It will be love and light, but it will go into darkness and hell. It won't lead to the truth. I, I don't know why that is. There's all these people trying to follow that, and they, they always wind up um, dead too early. I mean, they wind up dying. I, that's the weird. A lot of them die. That's not the way to. That's that's not the way to roll. There's the Almighty God that made you. Just say to the one who made me, I need you. Help me. You know, that's that's it, buddy. That's it. You go with that. You're going to be all right. You know, if the Lord blesses you enough to put a Bible in your hand, then you're even going to be more blessed. Because like today's reading of scripture should have proved to every single person on this earth that the Lord speaks through that word and look how he does it. Look at that. Look at what happened. Go back and listen. Roll it back. Go back. Listen. Cut it out and take a five-minute clip of that and that alone and just carry that around with you. Be blessed. The Lord's telling you the truth. He's not telling you the lie that this is one big continuous, contiguous uh, agreed upon history and future and present. No, it's not. He's not telling you that. It's the people in the churches have told you that. The Pope is telling you that. Your schools are telling you that. Because they need you all to agree on the same reality. So they can do more bad things to you. Because they exist right next to you to do harm to you. Because that's the only way they can live. Mr. Manfred Mann, the name of a group in England, brilliant mix. Who's your daddy? Is he rich like me? Is he taking the time to show you what you need to live? Well, I think you start realizing it's not about sex eventually, right? Do you? I mean, you know, sex magic is one thing. Throw your sexual energy into the circle, right? The witches you know, manifest it and use it. What do they use it for? To live. To exist. And that's how you, it's, 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 you know, to exist on bodily fluids. To exist through the power of what? Free will consent. That's what it is. It's not the actual act. It's symptomatic of the actual thing they want, which is the will. Don't you? You know, I think the greatest tragedy of all has been the dumbing down of the population to the point where many people can't hear the word that I'm speaking today because of a lack of intelligence, of basic intelligence that instead of being nurtured has been punished and so they're no longer available and so I don't know what's going to happen to them. You need some basic native intelligence that the Lord gives us all in order to understand what's being said here, it's, and I'm sensing so many not being able to comprehend it. I'm so sorry for you. Because you see, you're going to continue on as if this is all some sort of real thing. Your heart's going to continue to be broken, and you're going to continue to be pummeled worse than you ever have been. And you're going to wish you would die, or maybe you'll even kill yourself because of ignorance. Because of your ignorance. Because you just can't get your mind around the idea that, it's, that reality is what it is. You want it to be a fairy tale. You want it to be what you were taught as children with this other dimension of the devil over there and that whole thing. But still you come back to the contiguousness of it even though you see other dimensions when you're on that side. But you're scared to death now, and you certainly wield no power with them. You can't manipulate them. You're a victim of them then, which is why you're not happy and never will be, because you're subject to whatever they tell you to do. You live in a free country, but you're a slave. So no wonder you're saying yes to the New World Order. It's like Congress. They're all slaves. Right? They're slaves of Satan. 
They say yes to the New World Order, nod, wink. They call themselves Republicans, but their the name should be Infiltrator. They don't belong to this country. They belong to the devil, to the dragon. They're not free spirits. They're not free agents. They're completely enslaved. And so they worship the Pope and the Obama and the visit, the whole the media, everybody. They're all because they all belong, you know, to this dragon. They gave their consent when they were children. They went to the Columbia School of Journalism. Now look what they have become. They got in the club, all right. And um, they're there to persecute you, to harm you, to do harm, to give consent to harm, to war, to poverty, to disease. And then they, you know, the people who pay their paychecks need that to feed on, to exist parasitically, which should not be, and they're an abomination, obviously. They have a grip on this world only as long as the Lord will allow it, but right now he's saying, no more. A few years ago he said, no more lambs, and indeed I saw that was true. There weren't any more lambs taken to that. He stopped that. Because they, you know, lambs only bounce off the mirror anyway. They can never really be fully initiated because they're not, they're not really, you know, they are what they are. I mean, God, God bless them. They, God made them what they are. But you're a fool if you don't think. I mean, I talked to a secular gal, a director in Hollywood, who would had some, you know, success with, uh, she, she would do children's stories and things. And, and um, you know, I saw a couple of her films. She was married to a, a big movie uh, executive kind of guy who, like, you know, had the power to greenlight, you know, gigantic films. And I I think she's still around. Anyway, um, well, she said she got, she had to divorce him because she got tired of, you know, coming home, um, you know, and, 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 and seeing, you know, him in the pool with, four, with naked people. <laughs> she, was, she got tired of that, of that lifestyle because she was, a, you know, a good egg, but she was not a lamb, I don't think, but she called herself a defender of lambs. I, I was the one that coined the term. I said, well, I see you more like the defender of the lambs. She goes, because she's in the system, you know, she's in Hollywood, in the system, and, you know, lives up in a beautiful home up in uh, Coldwater Canyon and all that. She's, a, she's in the system. But she'd always been a friend of mine, and I'd always been what I am, so she'd always been a friend of mine, even through thick and thin, you know, I'd met her, I don't know what, I think I, I, I was a tutor to her on computers or something. That's how it began. And she was writing a screenplay, I think, about a, it was a movie that she filmed. I mean, she got the screenplay done, and then she went into production. It was really kind of cool. Most people write a screenplay, and they go years looking for, you know, for funding, right? Anyway, she um, she'd always been nice to me, you know. And uh, you know, been like someone who would step off the field onto the side and kind of advise. She knew that I didn't mean to. I wasn't trying to wage war against anyone. I didn't have a, this, this guy at Albuquerque. He goes, well, you, you seem like you have a vendetta against me. I don't have any vendetta against anybody. I do say, please don't hurt me. You know, if you can yeah, help it, please don't gang stalk me. But that never stopped them, you know. I understand. See, the reason that I'm a better friend than they could ever have amongst themselves is because I don't blame them personally because I understand what happens, how they get switched in and out. And I understand it's not a personal thing. So no, I don't have a personal vendetta. I have no vendetta. I, I feel f I'm free. I'm absolutely a happy person and I'm a free person. I have no vendetta. I'm here though to reveal to you something that you need to know so that you can understand. Once this, look, look, you don't even have to grok it. I've, the seed's been planted. Now it's gonna just blossom in you and you're gonna, you're gonna also be ready that the Lord is answering your question. You know, what you've gotten here today is, you know, what it is. I mean, it's, it's not linear, the explanation, but it's what it is. Your, your soul understands it. And your soul has been fed because you know the Lord God's got your back. He's got your back. 
But yes, as for me personally, I'm a very happy person. <laughs> I know that makes some people mad. You know, I'm also successful and I'm happy and I don't, I don't know why I'm successful. I don't know why I'm happy. I didn't, I, all I was trying to do was, you know, live too. Everyone said, no, no, no. Screw you. Go die. Pain, pain, pain. So I was like, okay, all right. I'll have to figure what, because you're not the same person I used to know. You, the one I used to know, like, you was nice, compassionate. We'd be friends, have a coffee together, talk. And then you became a ghoul, like a monster. No, what happened is they took their mask off, and you see who they really are. What you were shown before wasn't really the same person that you knew. Again, the same theme that's in the song we just released. You'd think this song would go to a, a million platinum platinums. You know, because so many people are beleaguered by this reality. You'd think they would flock to that song. But I realized when I heard it back, most people wouldn't know what it, it is about. And I started thinking, yeah, but it's like the same kind of lyric writing that they would do back in the day, in the 70s and the 60s. You know, the very poetic and very thoughtful and very metaphoric and very, you know, cool. But I realized that the people out there, they, they don't understand the vibe and everything of that song and the, 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 the great production and the great uh, thing that with the gift that they've been given, they, they don't understand. And I'm so sad I, of that. I mean, I'm a happy person, but that does make me sad that people can't receive the music. I'm so sorry for you. So, so, so very sorry that you go back to your Babylon music. I'm, I just feel you're never going to get it. I feel like you're never going to really, unless the Lord just takes you by the scruff of the neck and just moves you to another dimension and moves you, restores you in some way. I'm not saying you're not brethren. I'm just so sad that you can't, um, that you can't think, that you can't, uh, you can't live, that you're just mired in suffering and that you're so narrow-minded and you're so unavailable for ministering to that, that um, you're so locked up, you're so unfree, you're so fearful, and I just don't see a lot of hope for you in this. You may be a believer in Jesus, but you may not be part of the devil's uh, you know, family of uh, vampires, but it doesn't matter. You, still, you're just not free, man. You're not happy. You don't... You, you, People of God right now should be very content in the Lord. I, I cannot imagine why they wouldn't be thrilled at times. Now, I also feel sorrow and pain about the country. I mean, I just saw uh, the two beasts get together, Obama and the Pope, and I just thought, I mean, they promote the idea that the beast, too. You understand they're trying to promote that he's the Antichrist, and then you know, the other is the false prophet. One of them is the beast, and the other one's the Pauline, or whatever the mythology is. You know, the, this is Revelation mythology, uh, imagery. I'll just call it imagery. And they want you to believe that they're both the most evil. Th That's being promoted by the uh, establishment, which is beholden to the other dimension there that's trying to bring the New World Order in, which is basically leftist, because leftist is Satanist. Right? The left-handed path is Satan. The, the right-handed path of righteousness is God. And uh, one is the spirit, one is the flesh. They're on the side of the flesh. Right? Gay marriage and uh, whatever the rest of the terrestrial issues they have. You know, they, they focus on these carnal issues because they're of the flesh, these people. These are goats. Why a goat would be the head of the Catholic Church? I think it's a fitting end to the Catholic Church. I think this is the last pope because I think this pope represents the end of the corruption of the church. It, it doesn't get any better than this. Line, get your seat, get your popcorn going. Look at all the people bowing and fawning over this guy. They might as well all have 666 written across their foreheads, all these people. Don't just blame the Pope. Look at all the followers. When you start to wonder, well, how many average folk really do follow the devil? Just uh, watch the followers of the Pope. There's your answer. I saw one guy, a senator, of some sort, you know, which you know now means joke. Um, getting the water that, that France has had and 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 like sharing it, coveting it, and sharing the water with his wife because the Pope drank out of the cup. 
Uh, that is the ultimate golden calf abomination of abomination of abomination of abomination of abomination of abomination. That man is really, seriously evil. Is he ignorant? Um, I think he's desperate. I think his balls are owned, you know, by Jezzies in hell. And I think he's basically just barely holding on. And I think he thinks somehow magically this Pope can heal him. He doesn't realize that the elixir that he's drinking, what he thinks it is, is uh, basically demons incarnate. He's basically drinking demons down. You know, he'll probably uh, have his head spinning around in a circle pretty soon. I mean, that's what you're doing. You know, I, I'm watching. I'm horrified. It's the ultimate horror movie. I'm watching it every day unfold. Because I can see what it is. And what I said about the Pope and all that is um, anyone with eyes to see can see what and who he is. It's not really that difficult. But to deny that, oh, and then to worship a man, that's just like committing suicide. That's why I'm so baffled when people worship Christian leaders. Because the entire edict of Jesus is not to do that. Why so much paganism and why so much man worship? When it's supposed to be, you might, you, you, you might think this is, uh, we're back in the time of worshiping Caesar here. Anyway, and then the Pope says, he starts interpreting God and saying, it's okay to have abortion as long as you're sorry about it. Uh, you have got to be kidding me. This man is just, what comes out of his mouth are just, you know, dirty flies. Like when he speaks, his flies come out. That's the, that's the image I have. Flies of evil, you know, contaminant, you know, uh, toxic. Everything this man says is pretty much a lie. He and Obama are great. Whenever they speak, they, all, all they can speak are lies. They speak with forked tongue. You may have noticed that almost every single time the president speaks, he lies. He condescends and he lies. And there are actually people who worship him also. So you wonder what happened in high school. How many kids were part of that stalking of you and why you were stalked. I've gotten a little bit of field from the, from the topic of gang stalking, but I think you understand the point. You see how I've tied it in with spiritual warfare, with that whole paranoia of the thing when you start noticing how the set gets switched. The movie set keeps getting switched on you. The people keep getting switched on you, but they're the same faces. Switch, switch, switch. Every day something gets switched. History is switched. The past is switched. And you might catch a glimpse of it every once in a while. Okay? And then, okay, let's factor in the stalking now. Most of these people stalked have very sensitive people, and they're used. Yes, they're used. The targeted individual is used to produce a certain result that they feed off of, which is the trauma and the fear. And... Um, you know, like I said, they can't feed off each other because they, there's no power in it. They have to feed off the innocent ones, which most of the targeted individuals are. But the problem is, is this industry paints them as victims. And they a lot of become professional victims, like the, the Quades. They, he was, was gang-stalked. You know, they, they can, you know, his finances, is this just everything in his life. Every aspect. You go, well, are they meeting somewhere? Remember in the game with Michael Douglas and Sean Penn, how they ruined his finances? They ruined his movie career. Got to live up in Canada. Blame it on Rupert Murdoch. It's like Rupert Murdoch, he's definitely in the Matrix. He's definitely one of the sorcerers, okay? But... You know, I saw him with the, uh, with his, <laughs> I, I won't say what I was going to say. Inside baseball, you don't need to know more about him. But he isn't who he, who he appears to be, okay? And everyone knows that. Um, anyway, uh, so the bigger issue involving the death cult 
Um, the goal of the gang stalking, and what people don't understand, and they, they say, well, it's not to kill you. And no, no, it is to kill you. It is absolutely. When you're targeted, they consider you you're a sacrifice. They're not going to throw away good meat. The best power comes from degrading you. Following, tracking you, messing with stuff in your house so it freaks you out, keeping you paranoid. They're harvesting that. And then as you go down, finally, when there's no more utility, then they want you dead. I may move on to the next thing. Or derelict, being, you know, dead that way. Just being like someone who talks and bumbles and mumbles to themselves in the corner. You know, or someone that mumbles to themselves walking down the street. Someone who's becomes mentally ill. And that's, that's going to be the goal. But it's to degrade and destroy is what the, what the point is. And there's a holographic matrix that's all around you as a TI that is going off at every turn. Taking your video camera and filming the guy in the corner, filming the Barnes and Noble, filming this guy, filming their eyes switching to black pupils and all that, which happens too if you're observant, um, is not going to solve it. Going out and writing books about how awful you've been treated is being a professional victim. And who else has done this? Roseanne Barr. She's gone out. I mean, I'm talking about public celebrity figures. She lost all. She, she was thrown off her show. She's got no future out there because she's talked about MK Ultra. And this all ties in. Then she was targeted. She's actually a targeted individual. And I'm sure all kinds of weird, messed up things happen when you are. I remember that weird, messed up things were happening with me in one part of town. And, you know, drive-bys, you know, people, you know, messing with it. Just, just, just the neighbors, you know, you know, just suddenly everything just turned on me. Like, wow, all different, different movie set. And, uh, and then all the way across town, unrelated, a, a person close to me asked, tell me. How are things going in your life when I'm really, we're really under siege and stress? How are things going in your life? You seem a little stressed. Is everything all right? Well, why don't you tell me what's going on? And I said, well, well, it's okay. I already know what's going on. How could you know? Are you a part of it? We all are. Who's all? Well, that's a, a mystery you're never going to solve. Who all is? You see what I'm saying? Can we hear a pin drop? I don't think so. Or yes, we can hear a pin drop now. How do you know that, that you know, they were manifesting like in the line at the grocery store and then, you know, out in the parking lot and then, you know, uh, at the restaurant there, and, you know, down the street, you know, you know, they were just there waiting. I mean, how did you understand that? How could they just be there waiting? Well, they want to degrade you. They like to, um, you know, alter your appearance, uh, make you, um, you know, just a, a, a complete loser, a laughing stock. And then have people there on cue to laugh at you, seemingly unrelated to you. And then you wonder, if, are they laughing at me? Are you looking at me? You go, well, if it's, listen, folks, if you want to take gaslight, I've been gaslighted by an entire city, by every single person everywhere there is. Uh, from, from here to, um, you know, any destination you want to go, all a contiguous story. So that couldn't possibly be if some people rehearsing it in the back room. No, no, and no. I don't care about what John Hall says or anyone else. That is not what happened to me. You're talking dimensional shift. And I was massively targeted. I mean, you have no idea. You know, coma, this and that. Terrible trauma. I mean, massively harmed. Massively. They did massive, awful things. 
you know, uh, he, to the point of like, you know, they want they want someone dead, they just push a button, you know. They want someone gang stalked, they got the entire city all of a sudden, you know, hive. <laughs> so what this person didn't tell me, who thought it was, oh, tell me all about it. Kind of cynical, like, I mean, don't you get it, dummy? You can't fight this. And then I got people saying, that's going to be with you the rest of your life. You want to live like that? Most people just commit suicide. What's wrong with you? Yeah, so now you start to understand how it's coordinated. It's as big as it needs to be to, to get you. Or as small as it needs to be to make you convinced that it's just a one sector of the population over here. You could drive across town over there and you'll be safe. Nope. Continues on just like, you know, you turn the page in a novel. Same story. And until and unless you understand what you're looking at and what you're dealing with,